Hello and welcome back. Um, we are, before we get into chapter 26, which is other galaxies, let me make a brief announcement that next Thursday, meaning the 23rd it would be, we would normally be having in class our third exam, but given the unusual circumstances, that obviously is not going to happen, um, but we will still have an exam next week. Um, uh, it will work very similarly to how the second exam worked. I will be um, giving you an online open note, open book astronomy exam. Um, to prepare for that, I will be posting by the end of this week some study materials like I have for previous exams, like a practice test, so you can look forward to that coming along. I will make an announcement when I do that so that you know that it's up. Great, so now let's move on to chapter 26, which is galaxies. This taking our cosmic zoom lens, which started off very narrow and has slowly been working our way out. We have understood the Milky Way. We understood, Stan, some things about how massive it is, how we can measure these things. Um, and now let's take that knowledge and take it to other galaxies. Are they similar to the Milky Way? How are they different than the Milky Way? All those things. This is also going to start our discussion of uh, galaxies and cosmology. Cosmology is the study of the universe itself. How did it form? How old is it? What is its shape? How will it end? All of these things are um, studied by the science of cosmology. Um, and as we are talking about galaxies, which are the basic building blocks of the universe, uh, these are the things that we'll be using to answer those questions. And sort of the entire rest of the class will be thinking about those biggest possible questions that we can ask, those cosmologic questions. But first, let's tell a short story about the Hubble Deep Field, which is a fun story. So Hubble Space Telescope is launched, it's 1992. It has some problems. It takes them two or three years to fix the optics, but eventually it becomes the premier instrument to study the universe that exists. And the director of the Hubble Space Telescope uh, in its first, 1995, I think, one of the first, uh, in the first year after the, the optics got fixed, decided to take, as, as the director, he got some perks, and one of the perks is he gets some discretionary time to do whatever he wants with. Now, understand, Hubble Space Telescope at the time and still is one of the most oversubscribed telescopes in the world, meaning that for every 10 proposals that were submitted to observe things with the Hubble Space Telescope, only about one of them was, was, admit, was accepted. So very hard to get time, very valuable time. He decided to spend an entire day's worth of Hubble Space Telescope observation time, 24 hours or more, staring at the most boring patch of the sky he could find. And there it is, it's that patch right there. This is the Big Dipper, there's the handle of the Big Dipper, there's the bowl of the Big Dipper. That's the most boring patch of the sky he could find. You zoom in on it, it's still just as boring. And that actually is the shape of the original imager on the Hubble Space Telescope, is the field of view. There's nothing there. And yet, when you take the Hubble Space Telescope and you observe for a full day in several different colors, this is the image that you get. It, is, it was at the time the deepest image of the universe that had ever been taken. Almost every single thing in this region is a galaxy. It was so successful, in fact, that several years later they went back and took an even deeper field. They exposed not for a day, but for more than a week on a same exact patch of sky in several filters. And this is still one of the deepest images of the universe that has ever been taken. The Hubble Ultra Deep Field. Almost, again, almost everything in here, with some notable exceptions, is a galaxy. And if you recall back to the beginning of the class, we have some luxuries in astronomy that other fields don't get. For instance, we can, we can track the evolution of galaxies directly, right? If you wanna know, let's say, what uh, the Earth was like a billion years ago, there's no, you can go back and geologists can dig up rocks that are a billion years old and they can make some inferences about what they look, what, what the Earth was like and the conditions of the Earth. If you wanna know what a civilization was like 10,000 years ago or even 2,000 years ago, you can find an archeological dig and dig up maybe some shards of pottery and infer what 
their rituals were like and what they ate and things like that. In astronomy, if we want to know what galaxies were like five billion years ago, we just need to find a galaxy that's five billion light years away. And in this one image, we have many, many galaxies that are that far away and farther. You can just look at them. You can see in one image how galaxies have evolved from the early universe to today. And so that's one of the cool things about the Hubble deep, Ultra Deep Field, is you can chart the evolution of galaxies in a single image. There are, again, if you recall, the further way back in time, uh, further away you look, the further back in time you look. So, um, We'll, we'll get to that, and it'll be interesting to chart the history of galaxies. But for now, let's just look at how many different shapes and sizes there are. There are no shortage. So let's look at some of the, the, the commonalities. Um, here's a galaxy. Looks like a normal spiral galaxy. Looks like maybe what the Milky Way might look like if we can see it from above. But there are lots of galaxies in this field that are not spiral galaxies. Let's look at this one. This doesn't have any spiral shapes, doesn't seem to have any disc-like structure, just seems to be an orange blob of stars. And this is actually the most common type of galaxy in the universe. Even more common than spiral galaxies are these what we call elliptical galaxies. Don't seem to have a spiral structure or any disc at all. And so most of the galaxies fit into one of these two classifications, a spiral or an elliptical, but some of them defy classification. And this is what we call a regular galaxy. It's clearly not a disk or an elliptical galaxy, uh, but in fact, something else entirely. And so that is where I will um, stop our discussion for today. Um, we will come back next week and talk about the differences and the commonalities between all of these different types of galaxies and maybe even how they evolve from one to the other. So uh, stay tuned for that. I hope you have an excellent weekend. And we'll do it again next time.